Hey guys, welcome back to episode 10 of The Sit Down. Um, I'm Joel, this is... Mark. And we're going to dive right in. All right, man. So how are you doing? Good. Um, it was a productive day or productive week, I should say. Uh, yeah, sales are doing good. Everybody's at home uh, ordering records. Family's good. The snow is melting. So the kids were outside uh, with this. Okay, for the people watching or listening, I'm doing... I'm showing the height of the boots of my kids and the height of the water. So they came in, they came back with water in their boots. It was awesome. How about you? Yeah, I was outside with the little dude today there and then a uh, little bit of thunder and lightning. So that was pretty sweet. That was interesting. Kinda, yeah. Kind of missed my, that. My kids were sitting in the door watching outside. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been... Uh, I'll be honest, same old shit, man. Just another week. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Do you find anything interesting going on? Still that COVID crap happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's there's a lot of that. I feel going. it. It's changed everything, dude. It, it really yeah, has. It has. It has. And I'm not sure yet if it's for the good or not. What do you mean? Well, you know, change is, people say change is good, but I'm not 100% sure if this change is good. Like doing all I the, mean, everything, not that nothing wasn't online before, but just the way it was presented online. Is that what you mean? Like I have a feeling, yeah. And... I have a feeling that, um, you know, everybody's at home, everybody's doing these at home concerts and they're mashing everything together, which is fantastic to watch. But I have a feeling that artists are now seeing how easy this is compared to a whole production and going up to live shows. Uh -huh. I think, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that and a lot less live shows. Right. But then, so it might bring back the sale of like, well, I guess not, because you can still get it online. Remember, like, buying albums, right? Mm -hmm. do, do people still do that? I don't. Well, yeah, that's well, why yeah, I, I do. I do. That... No, I mean, like, oh, yeah, fuck, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of CDs, like, in my brain, as I'm saying it, you guys, I'm thinking of CD shops and stuff, <laughs> and I'm not even realizing. What? Oh, my God, Funky Moose Records. Wow, I guess it's been a long week, you guys. <laughs> it's uh, but Holy actually, crap. It's, it's interesting that you that you touch on that because the record or the the record sales are still going up. Uh, the CD sales are going down, so I have a feeling that CDs are gonna go down. I I don't know what the numbers are, but I think the number of CDs sold is gonna be less than the number of records sold oh, soon if it's not or i should probably look into this because that's interesting to me well i noticed some albums like on the website come with a cd right yeah. so you get the vinyl even sometimes there'll be like two records plus a cd and it's still yeah. like 25 bucks or whatever it's like holy crap there's oh cds are cheap to make I know, but if you buy a CD brand new, you're looking at like 20 bucks. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. And then here because you can buy two records and a CD for 20 bucks. Right. But that's because the CD is dirt cheap to make. Um, but the artists and the labels need to make money somewhere. So that's why they still like pushing CDs because they're cheap to make and they can still mark them up pretty good. Right. But if you see it as an... Uh, as a promotion or an additional feature to a record, it's not that big a deal because the CD is like $2 to make if you 
produce them in, in mass. So adding that to a record is added value for the customer because you get, hey, you get to play the record uh, in your living room and you get to play the CD in your car. Yeah. If you if your car okay. still has a CD player. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know where CD sales are going, but they're not, it doesn't look great. Right. That's why a lot of uh, uh, records now come with uh, download codes. Right. Well, like, so what do you mean? Kind of like when you buy a movie, how it's got like the... Uh... You get the, the download bar. code. Yeah, is that what the, what yep. it's called? I always thought yeah. it had. Yeah, a that's exactly what it is. Yeah, but that's yep. only valid for X amount of months or whatever. Yeah, like uh, all these actually, movies behind me here, all came with those the the digital version of it, right? But yeah. I mean, some of these movies yeah. are so old, I would never be able to use that and on the computer, like it's outdated. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's I I noticed it uh, a couple days ago on the new Aussie uh, record. Uh, it comes with a download code and it expires, I believe it's Ju June, May or June 31st, or last day of June, right. whatever it is. Um, but I also know that if you have that download card and you buy the record after that date, I mean, there's no way for you to tell, or there, it's not your fault that you buy the record after that date right so you can go to the label to the record label and say okay i got this record and i have an expired download code can you issue a new one and usually especially the smaller the indie labels they do that for sure and uh depending on the label the bigger la the major label uh, i know well i shouldn't say i know but i've heard sony and warner not being difficult about it and they just give you a new download code Oh, so I've got a, a stack of movies, phone. digital version cards like this. <sighs> I know what I'm doing this week. <laughs> hey, I just bought all these movies and... No, just kidding. Yeah, they came with a download code, but uh, <laughs> they're expired. Yeah. yeah, I just bought a thousand movies. <laughs> right. At an estate sale? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, everything... Uh, COVID still in the news, you guys, but there was some kind of interesting stuff going on the last few days. Um, mm -hmm. For example, well, I sent Mark an article. I don't even know the guy who wrote it. And I'll be honest, I only read like the first paragraph because I wanted to make sure it wasn't clickbait, but it was talking about how Post Malone wanted to do like a bunch of covers of Nirvana songs, right? Yes. And so I sent you that. And what's, what's your take on that? Um, I, I feel, I know I you're think, a post Malone fan, so that's kind of why I'm throwing it to you here. I wouldn't say f fan, but I think a lot of people underestimate him, es especially the author of this article that you sent. Um, it's funny cause way at the end of the article, it says explicitly that, um, the views of the author, uh, author, uh, does, does not necessarily express the uh, view of the company yeah, or something of the company right. yeah something like that and i was like yeah he's probably a freelancer that is trying to do something but he's doing it all wrong because he was i don't know it it rubbed me the right the wrong way in the from from the start because his view was first of all he doesn't like rap obviously second of all he's I don't think he knows who Post Malone is because um, if you're if you dug into Post Malone a little bit, you know that he can sing because he's done he's done it during his shows live on stage with an acoustic guitar and he he rips out rock songs. Um, then he goes on about this guy learned to play the guitar on Guitar Hero, you know, like every every famous rock artist does or something like that very sarcastic and i'm like mm -hmm, okay i i bet the author doesn't play guitar um and then he just keeps writing bad shit about him like you you could just tell that he had no clue what he was talking about or who you, post malone is 
do you think maybe he's just like an avid Nirvana fan, fan and like taking maybe. offense that somebody would want to like try and recreate the or not recreate the, the song, but why? I don't know. People Co- get like co- that. Like think copying of, uh, is the, is the is the best form of flattery. For flattery, right? Okay, but uh, yeah. for example, Greta Van Fleet when they yeah. come out and how much yeah. they kind of not emulate, but you know they sound like Led Zeppelin, right? Like let's there's no beat no. around the bush. Like no, yeah, are no, you serious? That's not true. No, no, no. Yeah, they were inspired by Aerosmith. Yeah, but you know how like people got Anywho. so pissed off about it, right? Like, I guess it was more fifty yeah. fifty, but that's still a lot of people. It's the same thing. But there's also, yeah. And what I don't understand is that everybody tripped over Greta Van Fleet because they were big all of a sudden in in no time. And they sound like Led Zeppelin. But then you have, um, uh, I want to say Big Wreck, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the band that I'm referring to. But they sound, the singer sounds like Chris Cornell, I find. Why is nobody tripping over that? So, to me, I the the only thing I have with Greta Van Fleet is that they don't want to acknowledge that yes, we sound like Zan- Led Zeppelin. I mean, there's no denying. Like, why why do you beat around the bush? I think it's because it, yeah, their I think their game plan there was to try and not affiliate themselves with Led Zeppelin, right? You can't do that if you have a voice. Like I know, I know. Right? <laughs> this not even just the voice, but the the whole sound, like yeah. everything together, just yeah. sounds like Zeppelin. Even the drummer has has little riffs uh, from from Bonham that that just I don't know. I I just don't get why they're in denial. Do you think it's kind of like their fuck you to like the not the industry, but like. Uh, maybe media and, and just whatever their own little maybe. inside F you to like, yeah, we know. And yes, we're doing this. And, but no, we don't sound like them at all. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe. And, and maybe that's part of their success too. Like, you know, cause everybody's talking about it and because they're not acknowledging it, that enrages more people. So yeah. they keep yeah. doing it. So it's maybe a that's pub- a that's, publicity kind could of be. thing. Could be up. Yeah. They're pretty awesome, though. Did you know how? Like do you know how they got their name? Yeah, something about uh, an old lady in their town, right? Yeah, that was yeah. Her, that's her name. Yeah, like just they didn't they like go through like the the directory and they were like, oh, here's we'll pick this name. And yeah, then... something like they they went through the phone book and hey, this this looks cool. Yeah. and I think they even asked <laughs> for permission. They went to they went to the lady and asking like, so we want to name yeah. our band you, <laughs> and then invited and then the lady invited was cool her about out. It. Yeah, because they yeah they had like they had a show in their her town. name on a big billboard or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw now, an as, interview and they're talking about that. Yeah, as I'm as we're talking about this, the names of our town, the the town that we're living in, the names of our town is just, are just running through my head. What would be a cool name for a band? There isn't None. any. No, <laughs> I, I find like they're yeah I don't know because they're all they, because they all have the same last name as you. What? Say that again? Because all the people in town here have the same last name as you. Yeah, it's because I'm the shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. <laughs> so, but hey, you mentioned Chris Cornell, right? Have you ever? Do you know he's got a daughter? Did you know that? Yes. Does he? Yeah. Tony or something, right? Yeah. I didn't even know that. She's 15 years old. I, and I just oblivious to the fact that he would have had a daughter. So, but anyway, a few days, about four days ago, she posted, uh, she was in his studio, right? And she recorded, oh, what the hell is the name of the song? Hunger she Song. Post- Hunger, Hunger Strike. Hunger Strike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She recorded that, you know, her and the guitar in his studio yep. as like a tribute to him and uh did you did you happen to get a chance to listen to it i i quickly uh glanced over it on twitter i saw it fly by and i hit play and 
there was a dude talking in the beginning, so I had yeah. to skip and I missed the first part of the song, whatever. It was okay. She's so. got some she's got some chops, but I mean she's still it's not like that's her profession. Do you know what I mean? She's not out there perf- it, well, that's my opinion on it. Maybe she is doing that. I don't know. But so is Michael Jackson's daughter. They're singing it in the that coffee yeah. shop. I, I kind of got that same uh sort of vibe. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, she, I think she did, there was a, I don't know if there was a show or a concert or whatever, right after Chris died. And it was like a month after or something. And she sang at that show, one of his songs, I believe. And I really, yeah. Cause remember. it was like, there yeah. was a tribute to Chris Cornell after he died. Like Metallica was there and like everybody was there. Right? No, it wasn't that one. It was a smaller show, I think. Where okay. she just happened to be, and she was pulled on stage, I believe. I it was a while ago. I don't remember. Right. Saw them. I saw them live. It's us too. That was pretty awesome. Ooh. Chris Cornell. I think it was a did you year see Chris? or two years you see... before he died. Okay, so did you see him solo, or did you see yeah. Audio Slave, or did you see Soundgarden? No. It was solo? just him on stage. He even, you know what, his like. His backtracks were like vinyl records. He he busted really? out some yeah he busted out some songs like acoustically, and um, uh, quite a few of them if I remember right. He had a record player on stage with him, and then he would play like the back. The backtrack was off vinyl. He's like, I just like the sound of vinyl really? a lot better. Yeah, yeah, it was mm-hmm. awesome. That's actually you can't see it here. Well, you can see just it's out of frame, but this poster's from that concert. Yeah, especially after I edit this, that picture will be out of frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cut that's that okay. off. Go go back a few episodes, <laughs> maybe you'll see it. If you see a deer behind my yeah. head, that's a Chris Cornell poster. Yeah. Um, should we go back to Post Malone a little bit? Yeah, because that we can. that uh, that concert, or yeah, it, it oh, yeah, was we a, were talking about house. the the guy was a douchey article, right? Yeah, so uh where were we going with this oh so the the he did a a living room concert um and he had two or three of his buddies um in his living room they were they were distancing because he has a massive living room um and they were doing nirvana songs he was post post malone was playing guitar there was a bass player and the drummer was, uh, I believe Travis Barker from Blake right. 182. Yeah. Um, don't know who the bass player is. Maybe I, I should know this, but either. no. Anyway, I, I would so assume the, they, they say it, I'm sure somewhere's in there. Uh, yeah. I but know. I, I quickly, well, I kind of skimmed through, um, through the concert and they did all the, you know, the, the, the famous Nirvana songs. And I sincerely hope that the author of that article watched it because he will eat his shorts on that one. And okay. Post Malone is not Kurt Cobain. We all know that he's a rapper. Sure. He's not, you know, a naturally gifted singer, like let's say a Freddie Mercury or Adam Lambert or whoever has a great voice, but he did a damn good job, I think. I'm gonna have to check it out. Okay. Oh, uh, and he was wearing a dress. Yes, he was wearing a dress. But that's a reason because does he Kurt dig, Cobain. Does he dig music. He dig music. Yeah. <laughs> But that was because Kurt Cobain was uh, was um, spotted a few times in a dress, and that flowery right. dress is what Post Malone was wearing during this concert. So. I'm curious to know um, Dave Grohl's opinion, like thought on it. He probably, you think he even cares? You I think? think he loves it. I think I he, I think Dave Grohl is one of those people that um, just loves music. And he um, doesn't really care about who does what, you know, he he doesn't get offended if somebody uses their music. Um, Oh, speaking of Dave Grohl, he did 
there was a BBC Radio 1 mashup. They had a whole bunch of artists from uh, Five Seconds of Summer to Halsey to Haley Seinfeld uh, to Dave Grohl himself. A whole bunch of mostly pop artists, uh, especially British pop artists. Um, and they did a Foo Fighters song. Uh, times like these, I believe. Yeah. Or Learn um, to Fly. No, Times Like These. And it, is uh, it, isn't, it. That's not the name of the song, is it? How's I it go? So. Wait. Um, In Times Like These, we learn to live again. Yeah, that one. Isn't that the title? Yeah, maybe. I might be messed up there. I'm mashing the two songs in my head, I think. Yeah, times like these. Oh, yeah. You suck. Why? Because <laughs> you were right. I don't know why I was thinking that was learned. I keep thinking in my head, times like these, we learn to fly. <laughs> anyway. Uh, sure. It was a long week. <laughs> but yeah, so the they, they, did, uh, they did that and it was pretty cool. Sweet. And the fact and the fact that Dave Grohl joined in on that, I mean, I'm a Dave Grohl fan. He, uh... I'm also oh. having another brain fart here. Okay. What the what the hell was that thing that we had bought in tickets for that we were gonna go to? The Black Keys. No. Oh yeah, there was that too. The Black Keys and uh the opener was would be the sheepdogs and the, then the, awards, uh, the, Ju the, Ju the, Junos. the juno awards oh man i yeah. couldn't even think of i was i don't know why Holy i was thinking moly. emmys i know i was like emmys That's not emmys right. I know. emmys is tv and t tv I know. And... i'm sorry you guys i'm not on i am not on tonight but yeah <laughs> what's going on have you heard anything about junos like because that was like Cancelled, postponed, whatever. Yeah, and I don't even know who won. I, I should look into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who won? Who got what? Right. Yeah. I haven't heard uh, nothing. Like, did we get our? Did I? Did we get a refund? I don't for even tickets? know. I honestly, I completely forgot all about it until like thirty <laughs> seconds ago, when I was thinking of the Emmys. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. So, oh, here, here's. Like no, Here's a that. list of that uh, the the artist ta taking part in that video. So five seconds of summer. Someone I don't know. Someone I don't know. Bastille, uh, Biffy Clyro, Coldplay, Dua Lipa, Ellie Goulding, Foo Fighters, Haley Seinfeld, Steinfeld. Sorry, uh, Rag and Bone Man, Rita Ora, Royal Blood, Sean Paul, Young Blood, and Zara Larson. And I skipped a few because I don't know, don't re recognize the name. Dude, I'll be honest. Out of all of those, I only recognize Sean Paul and Foo Fighters. Oh, and Coldplay, but I, I'm not into. Really? Yeah. You got to brush up on your new music, man. No doubt. You're huh? missing out. I know. You're missing out. I know. Yeah. I'm just um, starting to figure out who Post Malone is, dude. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I will, I'm, I'll check that out though. It's what an hour and 17 minutes long or something of Nirvana music. Yep. There's, uh, I noticed there are long breaks in there. Yeah. You think he's high? So I don't know if, well, it's also a, a fundraiser. So all the, all the donations that are done on his YouTube channel. Uh, they're matched by Google up to a certain amount. Um, and I think maybe in between they were kind of promoting promoting that a little. I don't know why, but there was um, there's quite a few breaks in between there. Right. Why don't we, can we like add that link to uh, to the show when we load the show yeah, up? Yeah, I'll add it in something? the, yeah, I'll add it in the show notes. Yeah, if you guys want down, to hear down below, down below the video or uh, in the description. Well, it depends on where you listen uh, to the podcast. It's uh, in the description of the podcast. This episode. Cool. 
So yeah, um, so there was that. Another thing, can I move on? Are we done with Post Malone? I, I, well, you're done with Post Malone, I have the feeling, so <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, I, I thought another kind of interesting thing was um, Beastie Boys kind of back in the news a little bit. Um, yes. They... I saw them... I saw them uh, with an, in an interview with uh, Jimmy Fallon and um, oh, the drummer of the Roots. What's the name? Questlove. Oh, Questlove. Um, so they, them two, did an interview with the Beastie Boys, and Quest used to tour with Beastie, Boy, Beastie Boys. Oh, sweet. So they were, yeah. So they were they were talking about the good old days and whatever, and they were talking about music and final records and blah, blah, blah. And you could just see Jimmy just starstruck, like, Oh, I'm, I'm talking to <laughs> Mike D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was awesome. But yeah, yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. So anyways, I, and I believe like this, our last Friday, like this last weekend, um, mm-hmm. they have like a movie on Apple TV. Now from the way I understand mm-hmm. it, like, don't be pissed at me if I got this completely wrong, because I haven't watched it yet. So, but the way I think it is, it's basically like old footage of them, kind of like um, uh, a documentary footage of them in the past. And then it's like a and a thing. So you ever see like Kevin Smith do a an evening with Kevin Smith, right? Where he's on stage and it's a big, long Q&A session before or after one of his movies. You ever see any of those? They're actually pretty good. Who's Kevin They're Smith? Good. Kevin Smith is like uh, Silent Bob from James. Oh, Silent oh Bob. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who talks so um, much. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it, it almost—I I feel like it's something like that, where they just kind of play old footage and then discuss it. Um, but it's right. like a doc, some kind of documentary thing on Apple TV. Um, so yeah. Anyways, that I thought that was pretty cool. That's I think supposed to start mm-hmm. like on the twenty fourth on apple tv yep. and then the interview that i watched it sounded like they've got all these songs that are recorded and not released so there's potentially a possibility of another album being released and god knows when right in the future right yeah i think that'd be pretty sweet i think they're and this is me theorizing things i think they might release that after they see the success of the documentary. Right. So the, cause I, 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 would they, well, maybe if they're talking in the documentary about songs that were never released, maybe those will be released after, you know, the, yeah. Like a the soundtrack documentary. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah. Right. Well also, so it was the interview I saw was, I don't even remember his name, James Corden. Corbin, Corden. Yeah, yeah, Corbin. Yeah, does, yeah that... he does the late late show and he does the the right. carpool karaoke. Yeah, yeah, and he was in the movie Cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, yeah, he was talking about how, like, if they thought it could be like a mini series, like a six parter kind of documentary on some kind of platform oh. right and they were like yeah they were so i don't know i couldn't really get a read if they feel like they might do something like that as well mm-hmm. right uh, and it might depend on the success of how this movie goes right yeah they might yeah. release something like that so kind of neat apparent okay wait now i'm remembering a little bit more of that interview and maybe i'm not remembering it accurately but (laughs) i i feel like they wrote a book right like a 500 page book called like the beastie boys book right and this movie that's coming out on apple tv is like a representation of that book where they got not spike lee why am i thinking spike lee spike jones i don't know i can't remember who they got to like collaborate with it to uh, it does ring a bell and make it make it into a movie and that's what this is yeah anyways i just thought that was neat bc boys out which one of them is not alive anymore hey one died a few years back yeah uh 
Mc, McMastered. Uh, yes. No. Who is there? There's Mike D. Ad Rock. And Google. I can't think. Um, oh, come on. Mike D. Ad Rock. And I don't. Holy moly. I didn't know there were four, eight, 12, 13 members of Beastie Boys. No. Yeah. So there's Ad Rock, Adam Yosh. Is that how you pronounce the name? Adam Y. Uh, Mike D. Kate. There was a woman in there. Rick Rubin. What are Rick you Rubin? looking at? Yeah, they're. Uh... Yeah, Rick Rubin. He's that producer. He's a master producer. So yeah, there's okay. So the three members that we that we usually see are uh, Mike D, uh, MCA, and Adrock. Yeah, yeah, MCA died, I think. Okay, good to know. Did you watch? Did you watch? I I, I I don't know. 2016, maybe it was the BC Boys video that came out. It's like 20 some minutes long, and it's got a whole shit ton of celebrities in it. Man, I play that freaking song all the time. I watch. I play that video I wanna... all the time, and I turn it up loud. It's got like. Seth Rogan's in it, uh, Elijah Wood, and Danny. McBride I want to say are, yes because it does. They, it does they play the BC Boys, familiar. and there's like a whole Back to the Future time travel thing. And then when they see themselves in the future, it's Will Ferrell, Jack Black, and I don't remember who the other one is. Oh, it's freaking awesome, man! There's so many celebrities in it. It's it like, does ring a bell. But I might have just watched it once and then forgot about it. I think it's like if you go on YouTube and look at like Fight for Your Right Remastered or something like that. Okay. I'll I'll have to look it up. But it, it's a good it's a good song. And it's a funny video too, because they end up getting like really, really high and messed up. And, yeah. It's very <laughs> well, funny. Oh, okay. So did you say Seth Rogan was in there or no? No yeah. Will Ferrell is it. Yeah, they're yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. They're both in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's, okay. all, it's all good, man. You got to watch that video. That's it's why about they get 20 high. minutes long, though. It's about 20 minutes long. Well, no, see, okay. it, well, you got to see it. So, anyway, for those yeah, of watch. you listening, like if you haven't heard that, just watch that video. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Set 20 minutes aside, turn it up loud, and check it out. It's pretty rad. But that's it. It's pretty old, too. Cool. I want to say 2016. Anyways. Anywho, but yeah, I thought uh, that was kind of neat. I, I was excited to know that they were um, still doing stuff, right? Cool, 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 um, cool, cool. Do you have another one, or should we go for a break? I uh, I can do one more quick one. Sure. Yeah. I can probably do a couple. Yeah. You sent me a link on the Beatles there. I honestly, I, I don't did. have, I don't have too much to say on that topic right uh but i mean it is it is news and maybe for our older listeners might be uh like well who doesn't the who doesn't well, like the beatles well it's not that i don't like the beatles but i mean i don't know i'm stuck in the 90s dude so okay so uh as we're recording this it is friday the 24th they are on Saturday, so tomorrow. The Beatles will stream the restored sing-along version of their iconic 1968 animated movie Yellow Submarine on YouTube. So um, you can watch uh, Yellow Submarine and you can sing along. Doesn't, like... I thought Michael Jackson owned all the music for the Beatles. Uh, sort like, of. Was there not like so? I know him and yeah, Paul the, McCartney were like buddy buddy back in the eighties because they did uh, the girl is mine they were, and they did another. They song were fighting over was, that girl though. 
Yeah, yeah, that's why they had the falling out, right? Because uh, Jackson won the girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, but no, uh, I thought like Michael Jackson bought all the Beatles the rights to all the songs or something, and like that's why close. Paul McCartney hated him. Or not hated close. him, but there's a so Michael Jackson had a a record label called ATV and it was uh, a joint venture with Sony and that joint venture bought the rights to a whole bunch of Beatles the a, a big catalog, big portion of the catalog of the Beatles not everything um so wait but yeah, so then so, does that mean does that mean that like when it says the Beatles are releasing Yellow Submarine sing along, does that mean it's Michael Jackson's label that's releasing that? If the Beatles don't own their own, I you know don't. What I, mean? I don't know on which label that Yellow Submarine was because this is a, also a movie, so that might have been on a different. Oh, like, okay. This, this might have been completely separate. Um. Yeah, but the songs um, may, like I said, it's not the whole catalog. It's a, it's a big portion of it, but it might be that this Yellow Submarine content is not on uh, the Michael Jackson label. Uh, but then again, it's a, it was a joint, and I don't know if it still is, or but it was a joint venture, so Sony still has a big part of it, uh, part of it, and if sony decides we want to put this on youtube then that's that's happening i think because right. sony is big enough they'll are you they'll, gonna they'll... are you gonna tune into it uh i'm not it says 12 p.m eastern 9 a.m pacific so it would be what is it 11 o'clock here or something in the morning no yes in the morning uh i'm not sure you're still gonna be sleeping. maybe <laughs> i wish yeah, I'm, I'm not i'm not <laughs> tuning into that but anyways maybe. that was uh maybe it's yeah. maybe it's good for uh for the kids teach him some uh some actual music what what are you talking about some actual music well i'd rather have him listen to the beatles than to uh Post Malone. I don't know. Ah, just kidding. Ari- Ariana Grande or whatever. Okay, why? Because I, okay, I'm not this black and white guy where I say that all the pop music is crap. Black and white, that was I a Michael w- Jackson song. Anyway. That's right. It doesn't matter if you're black and white. That's black right. Black or white. <laughs> um, but I want my kids. For those of you I want my just kids. listening, Mike gave, or Mark gave me like the weirdest look. Kind of like a that, that was my eye roll, yeah. <laughs> but I want my kids to understand the difference between electronic music and uh, like analog, I guess. But it's okay, yep, all right. But what if they like the analog better? Okay. Then they like the analog better. Okay. If they All like right. the digital better. So if if my daughter grows up to be an Ariana Grande fan, good for her. All right. Okay. What if she grows up to like Star Wars? Actually, we watched four movies together. I know you did. <laughs> and she was uh, mentioning and, it. And today she's today she asked me about fifteen times. Uh, if we could watch another Star Wars tonight, but I said, "Well, sorry, because we're doing this thing with Joel, and I have to." Are you, you know. a, are you a pretty like big Star Wars fan? Not as much as some people I know. As your not but as much I as do. your daughter. <laughs> oh, maybe she's becoming pretty big. Yeah, she she had answers, like, well, I don't know. Yeah. I could I could nerd out now, but no, it's yeah. she's uh she's getting there, yeah. Interesting. I've seen Empire Strikes Back, and I think an Ewok Adventure. 
I don't know if that's considered Star Wars or not, but it was the Ewoks. Okay. It was in the Ewoks. Well, we Adventures. watched. We we started watching episode four, then five, then six. Then we last last one we watched was episode one. So now we're on to episode two. So when you say four, five, and six, do you mean like the old ones first? Yeah. Like yeah. you watched them in order that they were released. Yeah. Okay. And then once we've done all of that, we can start watching one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. What about the series on Disney? Did you know uh, the new one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. And the uh, Mandalorian. That yeah, that's that what might it's be called. something for later. Yeah. We, um, there. we had uh we signed up for Disney Plus for a few months and then we found out that we're not actually watching it, so I canceled it for now. What do you mean that but, you're uh, oh, like that that you weren't using? But yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. And then so uh we'll probably re sign up. Just for Star Wars? No, You're like, well, yeah. Maybe. Anyways, let's move off of Star Wars here. I was just okay. bugging you because I know you're a dork. But. Yeah, I love you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's take this break here. Yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. So we're okay. going to put a pin in it. Okay, a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Canto Audio. Canto is a Canadian company that produces quality speakers and accessories like cables, TV, and speaker mounts. Their latest flagship model is the Canto Tuck, named after the remote Canadian hamlet Tuk Tuk Tuk. The speakers feature AMT tweeters, 13 centimeter aluminum woofers, 65 watts per channel, and a wide range of input methods like RCA for a CD player, Bluetooth for your phone, Toslink optical input for your TV, and built-in phono stage, so setting up your turntable is easy peasy. Connecting them to Canto's sub-6 or sub-8 subwoofers completes the full range sound that anyone will enjoy. They come in two colors, matte black and matte white, and they're available at Funky Moose Records via fmr.fm slash tuck. That is fmr.fm slash t-u-k. Canto, still a proud sponsor. Um, yes. Are they still on sale? And and still on sale. The Canto Tuck, uh, 200 bucks off until the end of the month. So you have a week left. Tuck, tuck, take. tuck, tuck. That's okay. exactly where it's from. Well, not the product, I but said, the name. I think I said that wrong anyway. Tuck, tuck, tuck. I think I said tuck, tuck. But anyways, whatever. Cool. whatever what else do we what else do we have hey, on sale yeah speaking of sales um some of them have ended this week we've got two record players that are still on sale for another week the lp 60x and the lp 120x with the usb right on those yeah. are um the most popular models as well so hey oh so are you saying if yeah. i want to buy a record player that's what uh get one of those out of those two, which one would you recommend? For um, me. For me. For you. Moi. If those yeah, are the my only L- two options. Then the LP one twenty X. Cause that will be something that you'll it that's that thing is built like a tank and it's based like off me? the very popular SL twelve hundred Technics uh turntable. You know, the DJ ones. So the tank. The... All I heard is it's a tank. I like it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to get it. There you go. All right. Um, um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what, I've, I, I started to... <laughs> <laughs> Both of us are like, um, yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was going to say, uh, at the beginning of this episode, uh, right right at when we started recording, I posted on Facebook... Um, Leave us a comment if you want a question answered on this episode. Uh, we did get an answer. Uh, I'm going to refresh, see if there's another one. No, just one question, which is fine. But I'm I'm probably going to do this whenever we start recording, which is normally every Friday evening. Uh, if you're online and uh, you see the question, or yeah, if you see my question or the Funky Moose Records question on Facebook, um just comment and we can talk about it live 
sort of as we're recording. It's not live, but you know. So uh, we got a question from Justin. What is the best way to keep your records clean? Um, well, that's most of the accessories we sell is about making and keeping your records clean. So to get them clean, let's say you bought your records off a of someone else or off a garage sale or whatever. Um, what you want to have next to your turntable for sure is a carbon fiber brush that just takes the the dust and lint off uh, a record before you play them. <clears throat> they're pretty inexpensive. They're, I believe from top of my head, they're 15 or $16. And uh, it's always a good habit to uh, just get the dust off your record before you play them. Then a step up from that, you would have something like um, a groove washer. Uh, people familiar with the old disc washer uh, before it ended up in Chinese hands uh, might know this. So the, hey, the groove washer, yeah. Can I, yeah, I want to interrupt. So just because I am not a record collector yet. Right. So if, if the vinyl is in a sleeve and then in the case yep. and on the shelf, yep. How does it yeah. get dusty? Because you said you might want to, you it's, know, make sure there's no dust on it before you play it. But I mean, if it's put away, yeah. does it, it when it's put does away? It get... No, when it's in the sleeve, no, no, generally no. But as soon as you take it out, as soon as you put it down, you know, you move around. There's dust around, unless you have a completely dust-free house, which I don't think anyone has. Um, you know, before you put it on, just just wipe it off because it's also that might when your sleeve is open are you okay yeah i just i was a big <laughs> okay <sip. laughs> um so when you have the record on your turntable your sleeve usually just lays around or is sitting in the stand or whatever and when you're handling a record putting it back into the sleeve there might be some some debris in the in the sleeve that comes out when you're playing it next, you know, so there's always dust and stuff flying around. Um, and that's what you'll catch with that, uh, that carbon fiber brush. Now, if you have records that are a little bit more grimy, um, like I said, you used to have the disc washer, but now the groove washer is a similar product with a walnut handle made in Kansas. Um, I recommend having one of those next to your turntable for sure, because it's an easy, easy way of uh, giving your records a quick wash. It comes with the G2 uh, record fluid, record cleaning fluid, and you, uh, it spreads out one? nicely over. Yeah, I do. Why don't you show it? Why don't, let's see it. I'm gonna okay. put you on the spot uh, there. Go grab it real quick. I'll, I'll be right back. Hang on. So if you guys heard that. Dong. So Mark's got his microphone um, clipped. Are you entertaining to them his, while uh, his desk there? I can't hear you. Oh Sounds yeah, like he you are talking. Left. But he's back. Okay. He's so this back. is the groove washer. For those uh, watching, for those listening, are is this is not so important. But this is um, the groove washer. It's a walnut handle, and it has a, a microfiber looks, brush looks like on top a, that you can take it off curling broom a little bit uh, but without the handle yeah like without yeah, stick what, on it it's kind of what it looks like and then you have uh the g2 fluid and it they also have the nice walnut groove washer block where you can put your accessories in well isn't so, that cute uh -huh. isn't that cool, cute huh? Yeah. yeah. So that's available on the store. That's um that's a very good alternative to another product like a spin clean. Uh I used to have a spin clean, but I upgraded to a vacuum cleaner, which I'll touch on after. A spin clean is basically a bath uh that you put your records through, except you don't want the labels to get wet. So just check out the website. It'll uh it'll show you what what the, it's a manual cleaning process still um, and it basically dunks your records in uh, water and fluid 
and it let has me, brushes let me ask you on the something. outside. So. Again, I'm going to cut you off here. Why yeah. Yeah. somebody who's ignorant and an idiot like I am, what if I just uh, took a spray bottle of water and sprayed it yeah. and wiped it down with like a, a Norwex cloth or something? Yeah, you could do that. But there are uh, chemicals in, well, water? It, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well yeah, it's there's like chlorine, chlorine and, stuff. and Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that'll, that'll, in the long term, and especially on very high value records, you want to kind of use distilled water. Um, but the, the, the cleaning solution that's in these, in this uh, G2 bottle or G2 fluid is uh, a solving agent. So it's kind of like a, a dish soap almost, but especially made for uh, the surface of vinyl records. And it kind of dissolves the, the dust and debris that's in the grooves. It, it loosens that up. And then with the brush, you just brush out the, uh, the dust that comes out. Huh. So a spin clean and a groove washer pretty much do the same thing and the same job. I prefer the groove washer because you can do one record at a time. And with a spin clean, it's usually better to do a batch of, let's say, 20 records because else you have a, a bath of water with fluid in it that's not free. Yeah. Um, and you yeah. do one record and you have to dump it out. So uh, I prefer the groove washer in that way. But if you are, uh, and a lot of people do this, they sit down, they take a whole evening and they put their whole or half of their record collection through the spin clean um to get that washed so that's they're both pretty affordable the groove washer is a little cheaper uh not cheaper more affordable than the spin clean um and then like i said the next step up would be a vacuum cleaner um the same principle you put a fluid on it with a, a regular brush like a, a carbon brush or a groove washer you um wash your grooves and then you put the the vacuum on to to suck out all the uh, the the water and residue that's left after that, and then um, I have a record doctor, um, but you have Okinoki and um, what are they called? Our no uh, VPI cleaners, and then there's the last step up, and this is probably the pinnacle of uh, cleaning solutions, and that's an ultrasonic bath. Um, not a lot of people have those because they are stupid expensive. But like, what what's the difference in price? Like, what are you talking? Okay, so this whole range that we're talking about here, um, uh -huh. the carbon fiber brush is around fifteen dollars. The groove washer is around fifty-ish dollars. The spin clean is $99. A record doc doctor would be close to $200. Um, an Okinoki is around five or $600. And then um, what was after that? Oh, the, the ultrasonic baths. You're talking $1,000 to $5,000. Now, why would you spend that kind of coin on the cleaner? I don't understand. Because you spent a lot more than that on your record collection and you want to keep it clean. Oh, which brings me to the next question, how to keep them clean. Um, so after you've done a cleaning, um, a lot of times 99% rec of the records come with paper sleeves and paper. I mean, if you grab a regular, you know, Static. craft paper uh, reg regular like a uh, you know a coloring book type paper or grab a sleeve you rub your finger over it and you'll see that the paper is coming All up right. is, is gonna yeah. is gonna come loose so you want to replace the paper uh sleeves inner sleeves with something plastic uh and i would recommend either the mofi inner sleeves which we also have on the website um or and if you want to support local, I suggest checking out um, uh, Vinyl Storage Solutions uh, new sleeves. They have inner sleeves that are completely, it's not sealed, 
but they have a flap over uh, the record. I don't have an example here right now, but they are uh, four mil sleeves. Um, so they're they're pretty thick. So if you put your nail in it, it won't damage the record. Whereas if you have a, a very thin Japanese style with a rounded bottom, they're very thin. If you dig your nail in there, you might damage your record. And with the four mil sleeves, you won't. What's the difference in price between those two types right there? Um, from the top of my head, the price of the vinyl storage solutions inner sleeves. Let me just look it up for you because I don't want to give false information. Sure. I do have a, that did make me think of a question to add on to there too a little bit. Okay. Well, actually, maybe I can ask while you're looking that up or you got the answer. Yeah, yeah I got the answer here. So we have the vinyl storage solu solutions inner sleeves. Uh, we have a three Just kidding, vinyl storage <laughs> solutions <laughs> inner sleeves. We have uh, their polyethylene inner sleeves. They come in three and four mil. The three mil is uh, $11.95 for a pack of 25. And the four mil is fourteen ninety five for a pack of twenty five, and then the Mofi original master sleeves is a pack of fifty, and those are thirty two ninety five. All right. And your question is? Oh yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> like some like, I notice in adding some inventory like a lot of picture discs, right? Now when you're mm -hmm. cleaning. Does mm -hmm. is there any difference in cleaning when you've got a picture disc as opposed to a regular no. record? And why why are there picture discs even? Is that just more of like a collector's kind of thing, or because the sound quality isn't as great on a picture disc? Do, am I wrong when I say that? Or correct, uh, sort of. So um, picture discs look cool that's right. why they're picture discs right right um people say that picture disc sounds worse but that depends on the mastering process um if you listen to last episode it all depends on you know where did the original come from right. and yeah you know that kind of stuff so if you have a well mastered picture disc versus a crappy mastered black record it might be that the picture discs sound better sounds better but that said um the process of making a picture disc is a little bit different than the regular uh black vinyl so if you have a black a black record you have a black puck of pvc you put right. that in uh, uh -huh. press and and out comes yep. the record yep um the process of making a picture disc is essentially the same except the picture is put on a very thin foil that's put on top of the record. After or before and then it's pressed? After. Because um, you won't be able to get the picture you know, flattened out perfectly. So yeah. they press the, the, the black vinyl first, then they lay over um, uh, a foil, um, and then it's sealed with uh, polyethylene uh layer that that follows all the grooves right so basically you have the original black record although they're they're probably pressed a little bit different um and then they add two more layers so the the margin of error or the the chances of something going wrong in that process are higher and that's why a lot of these picture discs don't sound as crisp as uh, a non-picture disc version. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, but they are they usually they come in in clear plastic sleeves, um, and you can so, just show them off because they. Okay, but I, cleaning them, any yeah. difference? No. Um. There might be cleaning agents that don't go well with the polyethylene uh, foil on top. 
Um, but I'm not a scientist, so I don't know which solution would work with that polyethylene. Right. Have you, in your own collection, do you have any picture disc? I do not. Right. Not even that and almost famous if... one that came in? Did you even open that one yet? No, it's still sealed. It's purple. <laughs> How do you know it's purple if you didn't open it? Because it says on the sleeve. Mm. 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 Cool. You want... So, yeah. Well, no, what were you going to say? No, Nick. No, nothing. Nothing. I think I think we're good for this week, man. I want to. I'm actually. I'm gonna go uh, put on that Nirvana right now. I'm gonna go rock yeah. that out for a little bit before I go to bed. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll make it a, a Nirvana then Beatles uh, morning. Kind of, kind of day. Yeah. And then finish it off with some. Uh, Chris Cornell out of your Canto speaker. No, just kidding. <laughs> out of your Canto speakers. <laughs> All right, man. Anything is coming I out of my Canto speakers. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're going to end this on that note. Of, Sounds uh, good. Picture discs and stuff. And uh, we'll be back next week, you guys. And just keep in mind, Friday night on Facebook, if you guys are available, just punch in some questions there so we can uh, maybe get some stuff addressed in the moment yep. sort of thing. Make sure uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, and then the podcast is, well, pretty much anywhere we can stream. Uh, also check out YouTube. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So see you next week. Have a good week, guys. <laughs>